in problem number 29, uh, we're asked to figure out three different things. Dealing with this function f of x is equal to x minus 5 over x squared minus 25. What we're looking to do here is find, first of all, the limit as x goes to 5 of the function. Part b is we want to find the limit as x goes to negative 5 from the left of the function. And then finally, we want the limit as x goes to minus 5 from the right of the function. These are the three things we'd like to determine. So let's take a look, first of all, at the limit as x goes to 5 of that function. So what we're talking about here is the limit as x goes to 5 of x minus 5 over x squared minus 25. Now, you might notice right off the bat that, hey, x squared minus 25, that's the difference of two squares. I can factor that. And so let's do that. And we get the limit as x goes to 5 of x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 times x plus 5. And you can see that the x minus 5s, in this case, cancel. And I'm left with the limit as x goes to 5 of 1 over x plus 5. There's no problem anymore with division by 0 here. So I can go ahead and plug in the 5 for x. And when I do, I get 1 over 5 plus 5 or 1 tenth. So the answer to part A over here is 110. Now, uh, let's look at part B. Part B is asking us, what's the limit as x goes to negative 5 from the left of f of x? So let's start over here. I'm going to erase this work. And I want to look at the limit as x goes to negative 5 from the left of x minus 5 over x squared minus 25, which is the limit as x goes to minus 5 from the left of, I can factor this guy, so let's go ahead and do that again. So it's x minus 5 over x minus 5 times x plus 5. These cancel again. So I get the limit as x goes to minus 5 from the left of 1 over x plus 5. Now the problem here is it's not like last time. Last time I could go ahead and plug it in at this point. But here, I'm plugging in minus 5 for x. And if I plug in minus 5 for x, I get minus 5 plus 5, which is 0. So I get division by 0. Now, if I get division by 0, then I'm either dealing with a hole in the graph or I'm dealing with a vertical asymptote. And the way I know is, do I have something on top to cancel it out? If I do, it's a hole. If I don't, it's a vertical asymptote. In this case, I don't have anything on top to cancel out the x plus 5. So this is a vertical asymptote, meaning that the answer to this limit is either plus or minus infinity, and I just need to figure out which one of those it is. So let's take something slightly smaller than negative 5. If I'm slightly smaller than negative 5, I guess that would be something like negative 5.1 or negative 5.01. Uh, so if I took something like negative 5.1 and I added 5 to it, that would be a negative number. And 1 divided by a negative number is negative. So we're talking about negative infinity here. So I go back over here to part B. And now we know that part B, we're looking at negative infinity. The only difference for part C is I'm just looking at this limit. Instead of looking at it from the left-hand side, I'm dealing with the right-hand side. So this is from the right. This is from the right. This is from the right, which means I'm taking a number slightly bigger than negative 5. 
in a number slightly bigger than negative 5, like negative 4.9, plus 5 is a positive number. In 1 divided by a positive number is positive. So I'm looking at positive infinity. So this limit is positive infinity. So uh, if we were asking, so what is really going on here? At the value 5, we did have a way to cancel out the problem. The problem for negative 5 was the, um, I'm sorry, uh, the problem with the 5 was the x minus 5. The x minus 5s cancel, so that means at 5, we have a hole in the graph. At negative 5, there's nothing to cancel out the x plus 5. So at negative 5, we have a vertical asymptote.